Hey everyone, so this is going to be another one of those little tool reviews. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this little machine, which has served me well for, I don't know how long, a couple of years now. Um, this is a polishing machine, which is probably, if you have jewelry experience, um, this is considerably smaller than maybe what you're accustomed to. Normally what you have is like this great big vacuum unit with a great big motor in it and those are really what I'm going to be upgrading to um, honestly. They have their their function, they have their purpose, they are really really solid machines. Uh, now one of the main reasons why I got this particular machine is because at the time we were working with kids. Um, this machine is variable speed unlike those bigger machines that are just like with the big motors and everything you just turn them on and they're just maximum speed all the time 100% that's what you get. That's, that's generally okay if you're in a situation where you, you're in a studio and everyone knows what they're doing, everyone's certified, they're of you know adult age, things like that. Um, well, this was, as I said, meant for kids. So this one has variable speed. It's not just on 100% every time. This can go as low as 500 RPM up to 7,000 RPM. So it will do the job and it can do it safely. So if I had a kid come up and polish, I would say never go past the first notch, for example. Generally speaking, they were good. And the other feature that I quite liked, that I, actually I have a mixed feeling about, is that this one has a fuse system. So, oh by the way, it also has suction cup feet, so it sticks quite nicely, it doesn't have to be like, you know, screwed in, screwed down. Now it does have screw holes, but anyway, sorry, got off topic. Um, down here, there is a fuse system. So in other words, if, say for example, a kid was polishing something and um, you know their sleeve got caught in the machine while it's spinning. Well, on one of those big ones, that's a really bad thing. That means that your sleeve is now caught, you're getting tangled, the motor is fighting you. Some of those motors are half horsepower. That's a lot of force to be fighting and you're probably gonna ruin whatever it is uh, that got stuck in it. Like if it could be your hair, could be a bracelet, you know, those are all generally safe safety things that you need to consider when you're coming up to a polishing machine. I would argue that a polishing machine is among one of the most dangerous tools that you can use in a jewelry studio. But anyway, this one, because it has a fuse, if someone gets caught in it, the fuse just, it, it breaks and then it stops. The machine won't function until you replace the fuse. The upside is, well, that's a very safe thing. And for kids, it was like the most invaluable thing. It's, it's like, if there's a problem, I know they're not gonna get their hair ripped out of their head or they're not gonna lose their shirt or their bracelet or whatever it is, doesn't matter. But I did have to buy special fuses. I just went to Fordham and I think I bought like 25 of them. Uh, the code is CP10513, if anyone's interested. Anyway, these are specific fuses. There's a little slot in the back for an extra one, so if you pop it, you don't have to go finding you know, your bag of fuses. You just kind of put the extra one in and gotta remember to replace it. So this machine was great. It's lasted me for a number of years. Uh, the only reason I'm upgrading now is because I want something more heavy duty, something that I can you know, bolt to the table in my dirty room over there where I'm doing most of the polishing. And it will run and it will run, it will run, it will just keep working and it'll be flawless. And heavy duty gets, it'll suck up all the dust and you know, just a nice all-in-one unit, something that's not tiny and you know, a fuse can pop and things like that. So as soon as you get into doing more industrial levels of work, not even industrial, just, just like a normal amount of work, uh, this machine is rapidly outclassed and it just needs to be, you need something heavier. So that's just how it is. So this is a separate dust collector, which I quite like actually. Um, this one is very simple. It's just a fan sticking out the back, a squirrel cage fan. It exhausts at the top. It has a little LED light on the top so you can kind of, you know, shine it where you want. And it has these replaceable filters. Now this is a filter that I've actually just vacuumed out. Uh, so it's a little bit dirty. And I think this one's only good for like 75% of, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, particulate filtration. So this filter gets built up with fluff quite easily. Uh, you just replace the filters 
Uh, there's like it's not even it's not hard at all. I have this replacement filter still unopened. It's got a carbon option. Uh, I'm not really sure what that would be used for specifically, but uh, I do like this feature. It has a removable tray on the bottom, which is actually watertight. So if you wanted to, you don't have to have you don't have to have these polishing arbors on the the machine. You can just take them off with a little screw, and it came with a kit for some alternatives. Uh, this one is essentially just a threaded rod. So you can thread on, um, you know, like a stack of those 3M bristles, for example. Those are really quite nice. And there's this one. This one's a cullet system. So I think it goes up to a quarter inch, eighth, and something else. I don't know. Never actually used it. But you can stick, uh, you know, like burrs inside of that. And if you wanted to carve stone, for example, or glass, uh, you can have a wet tray on the bottom. Maybe you have some kind of little drip system. It's, a, it's kind of up to you. But you can have a, a wet tray on the bottom, and you can have a burr, and you can carve away with diamond bits or whatever. Something else to note is that this machine, this, this dust collector, is actually also variable speed. You have an on-off switch on the top, and then a, a dial on the top as well. And that will just go from minimum to maximum and it gets on maximum. It's really, really noisy. Like it sounds like a jet. It's pulling a lot of air and it, you can feel it at the top and you can see if you do like a little smoke test, you can see that the draw is actually quite big from around it. I'm not entirely sure what is up with this LED light. Um, not that it doesn't work. It's just that this is some sort of specialty light i don't know it's hard to say like i can see scratches and things much better under this particular light than say fluorescent or daylight or or any kind of light really there's just something about this one maybe it's the wavelength maybe it's the color the temperature or combination of all of them i'm sure there's a word for it some kind of gem quality something anyway this light works great and it reveals scratches that may be there so this is just a quick little video. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say about this. Uh, I mean, it's it's a machine that spins. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a very simple tool. It does a lot. They're great. I strongly recommend it for anyone starting out uh, in a jewelry studio. Uh, the one downside I would say about this setup is that it's a little bit expensive. I think that's kind of like the Fordham tax. Now, I mean, Fordhams are awesome. They are seriously the best when it comes to like flex shafts. And then, you, I mean, remember, I just said flex shafts. I know that there's a thing called micro motors. Micro motors, definitely something I'd look into if you are along those lines as well. Um, but in terms of motors and, and generally just jewelry equipment, Fordham is a great brand. They have an awesome track record. They've been around forever. They don't die. They're, these machines are just great. So I would say that it's worth, worth the Fordham tax. Uh, worth the footprint, worth the variable speed, the fuse safety thing, the, the compact dust collector that can just be switched over depending on what side you're working on. Um, for a small studio, this is a great, seriously great machine. So that's the end of the video. Um, I've said quite a bit more than I thought I would about a machine that spins. If you have any questions, please drop a comment down below. I'll get to, to your question as soon as I can. If you have any alternatives to a machine like this, like a polishing machine. I'm open to hearing uh, some of your experiences. So I bid farewell to this machine. I will be selling it very shortly, moving into the next tool. When I get that tool, I will of course review it and unbox it. We'll put it up on the channel as soon as I get there. And uh, I will see everyone in the next video.